spiritual seeing. In many shamanistic traditions and many ancient tribal cultures, there is a concept of seeing, where what is seen is from the viewpoint that everything is energy. A person who sees perceives not only the mundane form before them, but also where it came from, where it is going, how it is connected to the world in colors, energy flows, gravitational waves, and even how what is seen relates to the personal experience of the seer, including their dream time and waking thoughts. In modern society, there is the unfortunate tradition of separating the physical world from the participant. You've got the world inside of you, and then another world out there. As a result, life seems to happen to us instead of as a result of us. We are tricked into believing that to get what we desire in life, we must work hard, be committed to success, and structure our entire approach to life around commercial activities, either creating a consumable product or working for others to make theirs. We get so convinced about this control contrivance that we seldom step back and really look at what is happening to us. And when we do, it's so shocking that we either quickly look away or head directly into a spiritual crisis. For those of us who have stared into the abyss of this crisis of seeing, it inevitably leads to a falling away of the illusory constructs of daily living. And if we stick with it, we'll go through the five stages of loss, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally, acceptance. It is at the final acceptance stage that we begin to truly see. We see the motivations of our loved ones. We see the control mechanisms of society. We see how we sabotaged our personal power and how we enabled the master-slave game of modern economics. There's a sixth step, another stage in seeing, and that is allowance. By seeing how we came to see, everything that happened becomes a hero's story. We woke up from our slave dream, looked around and saw context, how through the choices we made, we reached an equanimity about living. By embracing this allowance, the divine intention of creation starts to reveal itself. The intricate patterns of human interactions and the creative matrix of intention leading us all to a greater awareness of ourselves and others. We start to see that if it weren't for the pain, suffering, doubt, and denial, we wouldn't have ended up at a higher place. Everything that has happened, happened for a reason, and that reason is to experience who we are deep, deep down, far, far in. It is the hero's journey of being you for the Creator. There is an unfoldment happening where everything we perceive can be attributed to divine intent, where all things are perfect in their way, and all of our choices only lead to greater love and joy. Lately, there has been a good deal of attention put on what's called spiritual bypassing, where only gumdrops and roses, unicorns and rainbows are allowed, and where perceived negatives are avoided at all costs. Others are judged and convicted by what appears to be their negative circumstances. This type of fascism of the light is a control drama and a denial of the darkness, and it's a procrastination to total acceptance. What is missing here is the seeing of even darkness as light. Without looking at the unconscious darkness within ourselves, allowing, embracing, and illuminating it, there can be no enlightenment, no transformation of the inherent pain and suffering into the native state of love and joy. By seeing into the darkness with loving allowance, we expand our light and automatically bring more love into the world. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com.